can remember. It's two wow. years later. It's two years later, you know. So he didn't remember the fact that he was going to drill my whole mouth apart. Wow. He was like, you know, I'll schedule. Well, you don't have time today? All right, well, we'll schedule for next week. And I was like, yeah, we'll schedule for next week. And I just went, Bow! Right. <laughs> now I'm going to go get a different opinion there. Definitely. Four, and I'm checking in the mirror. Four cavities, you know. I brush all the time. And, yeah, the next guy was like, no, you don't have anything. Wow. Yeah. That's like having a, a, a lawyer to watch the first lawyer. Yeah. yeah. And I, so I understand to a degree where people, you know, feel that they need to think on their own, which is wonderful. That's a great idea. But at the same time, if somebody's an expert in a craft, somebody that lived it, somebody that, you know. The problem is that you had to know the man. That's the problem. The reason why there's questioning is because you never met him. If you met him, you know, you're like, well, that guy knows exactly what he's talking about, you know. I'm not going to question that guy. But because they don't know him, I'll give them that. That's the reason why they were jerks. Mm. They didn't know him. There was this one guy. Oh, man, to speak his name. Whew. The biggest idiot I've ever heard of. Mm. His first name was Don. His last name began with an R. Anyways, those who know, know. He was just such a pompous, arrogant person. Knew everything about everybody, even though they, he never met them. One of the biggest things in my life was I never want to judge anyone. I never have. And, and you know, should an evaluation come about, that evaluation is from life experience. I've met this person. I've seen them move. I've seen them train. I, I, I am not speaking out of my rear end, out of my posterior. <laughs> but there's that guy, this guy named Don, and man, whew. oh, since then I used to talk about that guy. So, <clears throat> anyway, he's looking at me, uh, getting back to the story. He's looking at me, and I'm looking down, I'm just thinking, yeah, you know, these idiots, you know, you know, wearing diapers, thinking themselves masters, you know, just like, you know, they barely experience martial arts, but they're telling. You know, this great master, he doesn't, he's not a real ninja and he doesn't really train ninjutsu. And they had dare to think, you know, think that online. I'm just shaking my head. And then I look up and he's looking at me. Like this. And I go, oh no, I think it's horrible. And he goes, oh. Hmm. And I said, no, I have the utmost respect for you. This is when I, it was like our fourth meeting or third or fourth meeting. I said, no, I have a world of respect for you. And he goes, oh. Well, I just, I'm just, just sharing with you about how it's weird that I have these, you know, this difficulty. I, I, yeah, it's just, it is, it is weird. And, it, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, it's, it's not at all on you or what you've done in your life. They never took notice to what you've accomplished. Mm -hmm. They're not interested in the facts. They're interested in whatever they've been told, or whatever they made up in their heads, or whatever. You know, here, here's the thing, you know. I So, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like the Matrix thing, where it's like, you know, they, you take a, you take a pill, and you sit in front of the TV screen, and you watch Kung Fu, and you watch it for like, a week, and now you know Kung Fu, so now you're gonna tell some Sifu that you know better than him. Like, it's the Matrix Syndrome. Oh, yeah. You're going to know better than the person that's actually been doing it? Yeah. Like, physically? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been stopped personally. I'm sure every martial artist has been, you know, has a similar story, but I've been stopped. And the guy tells me, well, that's not what I, I've heard. And I go, what you've heard? I, I've lived this for close to 30 years. What do you mean, you've heard? Mm -hmm. Well, I saw on TV, like, he's speaking as an expert because he was sitting on his couch. Okay, okay. And your interpretation of that television show, is that uh, expert witness? Is that what you are? You know, it's just like, come on, dude. Who was on TV? Oh, I don't remember his name. Oh, okay. And how much experience does he have? Uh, well, I don't really know, but he was on TV. Yeah. Okay. All right. And because of your years of experience, you have an expert interpretation of what you saw. Well, uh... 
couch potato dough. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the way of the couch potato. <laughs> you know, it's nonsense. But not to get too into that again. Right. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was liberating to, right. to meet people who, you know, are beautiful. I was, I was talking to one of his highest ranked students the other day. We have this great martial arts community where I get to talk to tons of martial artists all the time. It's wonderful. And I get to see them and visit them and they get to come visit me. It's awesome stuff. you got to get involved in that, guys. If you don't have a good martial arts community in your area, start one. But, uh, well, join ours. Join ours. There you go. Um, so, I'm talking to uh, Ali Kareem Sensei, and I said, I said, you know, we were talking about the integrity of his, of his teacher, who was Bo Sensei Ronald Duncan. Ali Kareem was with him for decades upon decades. He was probably his longest, one of his longest running students. So, I think close to 40 years, perhaps over 40 years. Anyways, he says, uh, I said to him, I said, you know, just in, I was talking about Ronald Duncan's integrity, and I said, you know, you know how many students he could have got if he had just not followed his heart? His heart was with Christianity. If he would have just jumped ship and just called himself in Islam, you know, I I found Islam now, and I'm Islamic. How much, how many, how much his profits would have switched, and how much, um, how many students he would have gotten overnight, and it's just, it's just the way of the world. Like that's, I'm not talking about one religion being better than the other or anything. But if he didn't have a code of honor, and if he didn't, if he was just pushed by the dollars, you know, in sense, if if that's what his goal was, then. He could have flip-flopped, uh, which he would have never done, but he could have flip-flopped if he was motivated by something like that, and he would have had a vast following. He had a very big following. I'm saying even larger following. And Ali uh, said, well, yeah, that, that was my sensei. He says, he didn't have to, you know, to quote Ali, he says, he didn't have to, you know, do that for anybody. And he wasn't about to. He was about being true to himself and being true to his family and being true to his heart. And... That's the integrity that I'm talking about, you know? Um, a lot of people would have done that. A lot of people would have been like, ah, uh, you know? There's no honor in that. No. you got to follow your heart. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you'll never be forgotten, O-sensei. And, uh, although I was not his student, I lucky enough to call him a friend and uh, a mentor and uh, somebody to look up to somebody to appreciate Arigato gozaimasu Arigato gozaimasu How do you say? Oos! 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 Critique of the Week! I'm gonna do Critique of the Week of Oh, Hanshi Gregory Duncan. Or oh, Gregory Duncan, Hanshi to be more precise. Alright, so let's get right into it. Alright. Okay, so this is taken this year, this footage. That's at a seminar that he did. He's showing different transitions, which he's keeping really tight. A lot of good locks. He's striking vitals. He's manipulating the person not only with the control of the joint lock, but he's motivating the control of the joint lock with the movement of his body, which is very masterful. Normally, you don't see that. A lot of good dogaishi there. He's spinning the trunk of the man's body. He's showing that he can not only keep full control, but he's also looking at uh, 360 degrees around him, looking for that next attacker should he show up. He's showing how the strikes fit into the locks and how they move from one to the next. Opening the man up to attack. He's striking. 
Some good places. He's sharp with that Dogaishi, making certain that he turns the weapons away from him so that he doesn't have to deal with the man after he's on the ground. Very important. He's taking the man's balance from him, shoving the balance to the front of his body before he strikes. Showing strangulation as well as uh, superior position. And he's kind of doing the same in a standing position. Using his foot that time to pull the wedge. Showing where the strikes fit in his technique. Positioning the balance to be aware of his surroundings. Showing some interesting position. When he's striking, you can see he's striking from a dominant position. He's away from the weapons when he's attacking. Showing some ground fighting there. He's about to. Uh, yep, that's Dogaishi on the ground. So he can not only manipulate it from a standing position, he can also do it from a lying down position. This, I assume, is showing total control of how he can choke a man while he's spinning the person into a uh, superior position. He can also strangle the man with his legs. That's what he looks like he's doing. Showing multiple strikes. The body. Does he have a knife? He's, you know, he's slicing the guy up. He's going for vitals. He's hitting the carotid artery, the femoral artery. You can tell he knows what he's doing with the knife. And that's that. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Okay. As far as this critique goes, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you straight because uh, it doesn't matter that I like the guy personally. Um, what we're seeing here is some advanced skills. When people empower locks and techniques, they usually do it with their arms. They don't normally have an understanding of how to move their body, so that their retreating motion is their attacking motion. That's what he's doing. His retreating motion is getting him further away from the man's weapons, being his limbs. You don't see that in martial arts. He's doing that quite eloquently with, uh, without the use of strength. He's able to put himself spatially anywhere around the attacker without putting himself in harm's way. That's something you don't see in the martial arts. Most people don't possess the skill enough to even know what he's doing. That's the truth. These transitions that he's showing, he could, he could keep that, any individual lock on. He could keep them on. He doesn't have to transition from one lock to the next. I believe he's doing that to show mastery of control. There's some stylistic differences for certain things that I wouldn't do because I was trained differently, but uh, I have an appreciation of what's going on here. Using the clothing to strangle, it's the use of the environment, not having to bend over using multiple limbs to, to create the dogaishi, the, the trunk spinning. Trunk spinning is extremely important for not having to deal with that person's weapons. Highly intelligent movement. It's, uh, it's, good. it's sharp, it's good. It's thought through. It's not, uh, it's not for flash, you know, it's for effect.